Could a common Canadian and European lending practice be the answer to American housing hurdles? We got new data from Kay Schiller that shows home prices rose for the seventh month in a row, hitting a record high in September. This comes as inventory remains a major issue in the U.S. housing market. Homeowners don't want to give up historically low rates and are therefore keeping their homes off the market. Now, mortgage portability would give sellers the ability to buy a new home with their old mortgage rate locked in, avoiding that over. 7% that new buyers are contending with. So could this be a viable option in the U.S.? Here with the details is Kyle Campbell, American banker, staff writer. So Kyle, is this something that could actually happen here in the U.S.? Technically, it is definitely something that could happen, uh, but it would not be a sort of quick uh, solution, if you will. It would take some sort of act of Congress, but there is some precedent for Congress taking actions that are sort of drastic. If you go back to 2009, you have the Home Affordable refinance program, or HARP, which allowed for underwater uh, mortgages to be refinanced. Um, so effectively, it would require something like that that would uh, be sort of going back and revising the terms of, of mortgages. But um, you know, there's certainly a lot of appetite for finding some solutions to the so-called so lock-in effect that is, as you described, you know, really sort of pinching the inventory for the housing market right now. How likely is any of this? Um, Hard to say at this point. Uh, I'd say it's certainly not going to happen in the you know before the end of the year. What would the timeline look like if we do see any movement? It would probably be something over the next year, maybe two years. I would say you probably need some some momentum to build up in Congress. You know, for someone to sort of say, hey, this is a cause that you know I want to sort of champion. And you need to see these uh, interest rates that we're seeing sort of be sustained for a long period. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, there's a lot of skepticism about just how long that 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 higher for a longer period is going to last. But if it does last quite a bit longer and you know, people are holding on to their mortgages longer anyway, then you might start to see some pressure and, and some, some willingness for you know, lenders and, and for investors in mortgage-backed securities to say, hey, actually, maybe this is something that you know, could be beneficial to us. Mm -hmm. From your research, how much is this kind of uh, lock-in effect, if you will, hurting the housing market, where people are just sitting in their homes, uh, and you know, it just it does, of course, reduce inventory. But how much is it really hurting the housing market? I think it's tough to say that you know, to quantify just how much that's playing a role. Um, but you certainly have the anecdotes. And um, one thing that I, I found interesting is. Um, Looking at sort of the other side of portability is uh, assumability, and some loans uh, are allowed to be assumed by the new buyer, um, and specifically FHA loans. Um, and if you look at the, the numbers there, through the first three quarters of this year, we've already seen uh, sort of a record high for the number of uh, assumed FHA mortgages. Um, and it's not a huge number, it's 3,800, but again, sort of uh, more than any year on record so far. So it shows that people are looking for creative solutions to, um, you know, to, to make transactions happen. And in those FHA transactions, the average interest rate is around just above 4%. So it's a much better deal for the buyer. From those that you're talking uh, to within the industry in terms of an uptick or when we're going to see more activity, what does that timeline look like? And when it comes to mortgage rates, we know obviously the massive spike that we saw in the 30-year mortgage certainly is, uh, had a chilling effect on mm -hmm. the housing market to say the least. What level or is there any, I guess, relief in sight in terms of some of the pullback that we have seen in recent weeks? Um, I mean, I think that uh, you're going to have to start seeing rates come down quite a bit to get past this lock-in um, mm -hmm. number. Because if you look at, uh, I think so, that a Redfin has a statistic that roughly 90% of you know, uh, mortgages out yeah. there are 6% or lower, and quite a few are you know, 4 and 5% or lower. So you're going to have to start seeing probably, you know, you know, rates get back down towards that 6% um, level. Or, you know, th there's a, a belief that, you know, time just marches on, people, you know, eventually make moves for other reasons that are not purely interest rate driven, jobs, you know, um, educational opportunities, what have you. So um, I'd say if, if it's, if it's going to be a near term relief, it's going to have to come on that on that mortgage rate coming down. So with regard to mortgage portability, how much support are you hearing that it could actually get from lawmakers? Um, I'm hearing it more on the industry side, on, on different parts of the real estate industry. Um, so I haven't heard a, a, a real robust response from lawmakers just yet. But um, you know, these things have been percolating and bouncing around uh, Washington. Uh, the Mortgage Bankers Association is hearing a lot of interest in it as well, looking into some of the potential challenges and potential benefits as well. 
All right, Kyle Campbell, always good to have you. Thanks so much for joining us here. Staff writer with American Banker. Thanks. Thank you.